We started with a stock VE pump 12 valve Cummins in my 1985 Dodge W250 crew cab. With the help of the Hunger Diesel, we gradually added more modifications from their power packages and tested those upgrades at various dyno events along the way. Most recently, we finished installing compound turbos, a larger intercooler, and another secret modification and dynoed the truck at 569 horsepower. So now we're to the point where we need to put all those modifications to the test. However, as you'll see in this video, things do not go quite according to plan. Luckily and coincidentally, today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is the largest online therapy service. They make it easy to connect you with a licensed therapist from the comfort of your couch, your garage, wherever you're at. Whether it's by video, phone, or even chat sessions, they've got options for everyone. And as someone who's personally used BetterHelp, and as someone who's recommended it to hundreds of people in my professional career as a physical therapist, I can vouch for how powerful this has been for helping me manage stress in difficult times. Just like the stress that comes with working on these old trucks, as many of you know. And trust me, these old trucks know how to test your patience. So if you're dealing with stress or anxiety yourself, make sure to give BetterHelp a try. They've actually set up a discount code for my viewers where you get 10% off for your first month using the link betterhelp.com slash decentgarage, also in the description. So with that, let's get back to the video. Hopefully we can keep stress to a minimum, but we'll see. Now I've had lots of people ask, what's the drivability like and especially how does this do towing with compound turbos? I'm going to show you everything about towing. Short version, I love it. It is awesome. But I'll take you along for some rides, towing some trailers, show you what it looks like. But our compound turbos have caused another issue that we need to address. We have a lot of crankcase pressure going through the motor, which has caused a lot of oil leaks. So we're going to address that after we go pull a couple trailers. Now, many of you know that I'm kind of feeling like the trailer I've been using to haul stuff is a little small for what we need to do. So I parked that for the time being, and guess what? I upgraded trailers. So to start this video off, let's go pick up the new trailer. So as far as drivability goes unloaded, it's really, really good. Um, it actually, I believe the compounds do better when you're towing. Uh, it's a little smokier when you're not towing just because there's not as much load to get the turbos to spool up. Uh, but it's, it's quite clean anyways when you're unloaded. The other big thing that I've noticed, and I mentioned this in the previous few videos, is how quiet it is. Uh, it's so nice to have it quiet in the cab, not have a bunch of turbo noise, engine noise. It's just a much more enjoyable driving experience. So that's how it is unloaded. Once we get the trailer, we'll take that around. I'll show you the gauges and talk to you about how it feels towing, which is where these compounds really shine. All right, back out to the trailer. <clears throat> New trailer, thanks to Cade. So I, I think it's a 24 foot with a six foot dovetail. Might be 20 plus six, I don't know. We'll measure when we get home. Whew. Get out of the sun, there we go. All right guys, so we were heading home just fine, got on the freeway, doing just fine, and all of a sudden I heard a pop from the truck. I uh, heard a pop, the engine started running rough, so I pulled over, uh, let it idle, it was running real rough, popped the hood, and uh, I'll put a video, I took a video here with my phone. So, 
Sounds like it's missing. It's almost like it's popping out of the intake, and so I tried to put it in gear, and then it's like the transmission won't go in gear. It starts clunking, so it's like two separate issues. Uh, maybe a, a head gasket, which uh, is if you're following the road to 600, we were anticipating that. But the transmission not going in gear is weird, and the fact that they happened at the same time. So I've got roadside assistance. I put a, um, a request in. Not sure what they'll do about the trailer, but I do have a buddy pretty close to here who can haul a gooseneck. So if they can't take the trailer, I'll just call my buddy and see if he can snag it real quick. But the OG crew cab is down for the count right now and it does not seem good. So hopefully we get this thing home tonight and I'm just hoping to stay safe because I'm sitting on the side of the freeway and everyone's just blasting past me. So not fun dead in the water. Just out here waiting for a tow truck for the truck and my buddy Laredo is going to come grab the trailer. Uh, now I'm really anxious to dig into this and see what the issue is. So anyways we'll get it towed home. We'll check it out this week and uh, show you guys as we tear it apart. See what we can find. This is my first major issue with any of my trucks. So we'll see what happens. All right, here's the truck, dead in the water, obviously. Um, it looks fine up here, but the oil looks good, smells good, tastes good, all of the above. Coolant looks fine. So I think the plan, we're gonna drain just a little bit of oil, make sure there's no coolant in it. Then we're gonna pull the valve covers, probably start it, see what the valve train looks like as it runs and then uh, go from there. See if we need to dig further into the head or if we need to come look at the turbos or if we need to go back, look at the transmission, uh, where we need to go from there. Cut the oil filter open before we run it. Because it's too invested <clears throat> in it. Valves are all cut loose. Well, I just don't know how thick the little aluminum base is in there. It's come off. <clears throat> Doesn't look bad. No, that stuff's super black. Get some towels in your vise. Till it won't. Keep going. Are we looking? Oh, Kevin is so strong. I'm so strong. <laughs> Got some glitter in there. Down here. I don't know what that is. That looks like paint or something. But there's quite a bit of metal in there. How many miles do you say is on that thing? Like two something? 200. All right, so first issue we've found so far is the lash is way out. Super, super loose. What'd you get? That is 62, it won't take 62. Well, 58 will go. Oof. 
That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. We found the issue. Well, an well, issue. An issue, a symptom, I guess. There's the valve spring on number six. Push rod's completely out. So, we need to pull the head. We gotta pull the head, figure out this valve that hit the piston, which it probably did go from there so to pull the head we're gonna pull the turbos pull the intake off kind of clear everything out We're making progress. We've got everything off this side, everything off that side. We're just dropping the alternator and then it's time to start pulling head studs. So that, we made quick work of that. Hour maybe to get all that off? Yeah, but it's a first gen. It's very easy to get to. It's true, it's true. So time to pull the head off and take a look. Got the rockers out. Uh, I'll show you this valve spring, but the valve spring broke. We don't know if that's what caused the issue or if that's if that's from the, the cause issue. or if that's a result. Yeah, here's this push rod is the one that was back there. It's bent. Well, but that's probably from the rocker arm yeah. slapping around and being told what to do by the rocker. So we're pulling push tubes and then we're pulling the head. Okay, everything's off. I think so. Give me a little pry bar and we'll crack this head so it makes break the seal and then do you just want me to Head's hand it? Loose. Do you want me to hand it to you? I'm not as strong as Kevin. Who's Kevin? <laughs> I mean we might as well use the picker if we got it. Do you how want you, a chain? How do you hook them? There's a there's a thing back here and then this one right here. Oh, is this turned upside down? That's how it comes, but I think if you take it out you're supposed to turn it the other way. He's never pulled ahead, but he's got a chain to do it. I mean, I've seen people do it, so he's got the stuff. You think the valve has come undone and gone through the piston? No. I've seen that before. No. There's no way. I just hope it only hit it once, so I can just button it all back up. <laughs> okay. Ready? On up. You need to use crane signals. <laughs> All right, take a quick look over there. Make sure we got everything off. Look like we're unhooked. Yep, we are unhooked. All right, come on up. Oh, hold on. We got a ground cable. Um, Thirteen and a ratchet. Okay, I'll turn this sideways, and then you can pull it back. Go yeah. up a hair and then you start working out towards the hold it, hold it. We're hooked on something. Oh, yeah. Okay. Getting the first look. I've already looked down the cylinder. And? <laughs> All right, pull it out. Here we go. Oh yeah, it turned sideways. I think that valve spring broke and it dropped a valve. Oh yeah, it definitely turned sideways. She done for? Well, you can see where it had been slapping the bottom of the valve. Like the, the spring was broken. You can see it had been slapping the piston here for a while. And you can see where it's turned sideways. Oh, jeez. That is no bueno. No bueno. There's in the cylinder. No good. 
No good. Yeah, you can see where we had a bunch of piston assisted valve closures for a while and then it turned sideways and broke the bottom of that valve off and shoved it up in the head. At least it at least it stayed in the head. There it is. Yeah, at least that at least it stayed in the head. If it would have come out and kept banging around, it probably would have split a piston. So in a sense, we kind of got lucky. Let me show you what we think happened. So here is the valve spring and it's in two pieces, which it should not be. Looks like it just cracked and broke right there. Um, we think the valve spring broke because the retainers, we found those and they still have their little ribs on them so it's not like those just let go and gave loose so anyways that looks like what caused it and then the valve dropped and got hit by the piston a couple times then got shoved right up in there and then in the cylinder now that we moved the truck let me show you you can see you can see exactly where the valve hit but luckily the valve hit the cylinder and that's it it did not hit the cylinder wall um, which is I, I mean that's a good thing so again this video did not go as according to plan um, I was not expecting this to happen but it is what it is that's the life of driving these trucks and shooting for higher horsepower that's just what happens so I'm gonna tear the whole motor out of the truck we're gonna tear it completely down um, at least on the cylinders get a new piston for number six reseal it new bearings um, just refresh it luckily we don't have to get the the cylinders bored uh, and then I'll get the head redone make sure that valve can make sure they can still make that seal and uh, then we'll throw it all back together and probably get a bunch of stuff powder coated make it look really nice kind of make some lemonade out of this lemon but that is the life of working on these trucks that's how it goes so towing with compounds is awesome I don't think this is a failure from towing heavy or anything like that must be some type of fluke with the valve spring I got to remember what brand of valve springs we put in but these are 60 pound valve springs uh, new retainers new keepers really really kind of weird that that happened so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed that we'll be working on this more we got so many projects around here we'll never be short of that i'm out of a truck for a daily driver i'll have to figure something out for that if i need a truck to take things here and there i'll figure that out but i hope you enjoyed that video i hope you enjoyed seeing something bad happen to me it's not all good around here but we'll make the best of it All right, I'm driving along bed Larry, and even though the OG crew cab is down for now, that's not the end of it for the OGs. You guys know it's going to come back stronger. The long bed Larry is, uh, it'll be done in two days. I've got two more things to install, and then it's done. This truck is so awesome. I've been driving it more, drove it on the freeway, does really well, rides really smooth. Seriously, an awesome, awesome truck. Also, I'm going to be taking Long Bed Larry on a pretty epic road trip, so stay tuned for that video. Uh, it'll be fun. We're going to stop and see some people on the way, show Long Bed Larry off as we go. It should be a really epic trip. So I hope you enjoyed the video today. Poor OG Crew Cab, but I'm looking forward to having that thing built back better.